If a compound has a higher vapor pressure, what does that say about the boiling point? What does that say about the melting point? Uh, before we do that, let's do 3.1, which says, uh, let's define the term melting point. So melting point is the temperature at which the solid and liquid phase are at equilibrium. The temperature at which the solid and the liquid phase are at equilibrium. And then now 3.2 says, which one of C or D has the higher vapor pressure? Give a reason for your answer. So here uh, we are given compounds and their melting point. So for you to be able to answer this question, you need to know the relationship between vapor pressure and melting point. So what is the relationship between the two? Uh, we know fully well that uh, the higher the vapor pressure, the lower the boiling point. The same is true for melting point. The higher the vapor pressure, the lower the melting point. So between C or D, the one with the lower melting point has the higher pressure based on this relationship we're proposing. So which one between uh, C or D has a lower melting point? It's clear to see that C has a lower melting point, right? At minus 16 degrees Celsius uh, versus D, which has a melting point of 16.7. So our answer for uh, 3.2, we would say C. And then why are we saying C? We are saying C because it has a lower melting point. We know fully well that the higher the vapor pressure, the lower the melting point. 3.3.1 says let's define the term structural isomer. So structural isomers are organic compounds that have the same molecular formula but different structural formula. The same molecular formula but different structural formula. Right, and then 3.3.2 says explain why B has a higher melting point than A. Refer to structure, intermolecular forces, and energy in your explanation. So A and B are structural isomers. They have the same molecular formula but different structural formula. So let's look at A. A is clearly branched, right? It says 2-methyl hexane. So on the second carbon, we're supposed to have a branch. And then B just says heptane. So B is a straight alkane. That is the only difference between the two. And we're going to use that uh, to explain our answer. So we are already told that uh, B has a higher melting point. If B has a higher melting point, we will know consequently uh, that it has a lower uh, vapor pressure, right? Because the higher the vapor pressure, the lower the melting point. So here we have higher melting point, so we need uh, lower vapor pressure. But why does it have lower vapor pressure, but A doesn't have? So the difference between A and B is that uh, B is less branched, right? As we are proposing, uh, B is a straight alkane, uh, while A is a branched alkane. But then if it's less branched, then what will that mean? That will mean that uh, we have stronger intermolecular forces. So we have strong IMF. Right? And then stronger intermolecular forces uh, will mean that uh, we need more energy to break bonds in compound B, right? So more energy uh, required uh, to overcome IMF. Uh, just to recap, we are comparing A and B. B has a higher melting point, so we know that it has lower vapor pressure. If it has lower vapor pressure, it has stronger IMF. And if it has stronger IMF, then it requires more energy to overcome uh, the intermolecular forces, right? But then what's the difference between A and B? The only difference between A and B is that B is the last branch. So this tells us that if you have two structural isomers, the one that is less branched will always have a higher melting point versus the one 
that is more branched now let's do 3.4 3.4 says uh, let's explain the difference in the boiling points of c and d referring to the intermolecular forces and the energy in our explanations right let's go back to the basics real quick here so we know that uh compound uh c right is an alcohol and then compound uh, d is an acid right so because compound c and compound d are uh, with an alcohol and an acid we know fully well that they both possess hydrogen bonding right we know that they both have hydrogen bonding right uh, so we can say that uh, they both have hydrogen bonding but then if they both have hydrogen bonding then why do they have different uh, melting points and consequently different boiling points that is because compound d right uh, which is our acid has two sides two sides of hydrogen bonding uh, versus compound c that has only one side of hydrogen uh, bonding now the question you're asking yourself might be wait a minute what are we talking about why are you saying uh, compound d has two sides of hydrogen bonding uh, that is because s's can go under a process uh, called dimerization right and then alcohols cannot uh, so we say that uh, compound d uh, has two sides of hydrogen uh, bonding right uh, if it has two sides of hydrogen bonding then what does it mean it means uh, our compound d uh, has stronger uh, intermolecular forces right and then what do we know about uh, compounds that have stronger intermolecular forces uh, they require more energy uh, they require more energy to overcome the intermolecular forces and if it requires more energy to overcome the intermolecular forces uh, then the boiling uh, the boiling point of compound d right uh, will be greater than that of compound c